Hello, Harrisburg, Oregon Storytime. Today, I am going to read you The Secret Garden. And I haven't read this book at one of our live story times. It's pretty long, so I'm just going to make a video out of it. But this is a shortened version. Um, it's written by Francis Hodgson Burnett, but it's retold by Savior Pirolta. Yep. The Secret Garden. No one seemed to like nine-year-old Mary Lennox, not even her own parents. Mary was always in a foul mood. They lived together in India. Mary woke up one morning to find a strange woman in her room. Where is my nanny? screamed Mary. The strange woman ran away. Then the door opened and two Englishmen stepped in. Will no one come? Mary shrieked. There is no one left to come, said one of the Englishmen. Mary's nanny and her parents had both died of a frightful disease. Mary could no longer stay in India. She would have to go and live with her uncle, Mr. Craven, at Misselthwaite Manor in England. Mary traveled to England on a ship. In London, she met Mrs. Medlock, her uncle's housekeeper. They took a train and then a carriage, traveling across grassy plains. Mary thought they must be getting close. What is my uncle like? she asked. He has a crooked back, and that has made him very sour, said Mrs. Medlock. Oh, Mrs. Medlock answered. At last, a forbidding house loomed before them. Misselthwaite Manor. A butler rushed out to meet them. Please take her straight to her room, Mrs. Medlock, he said, and Mr. Craven, Mr. Craven is preparing to travel again. Mrs. Medlock marched Mary through a maze of corridors. At last, she opened the door to a small room. Dinner was laid out on a table. You're to stay in here, said Mrs. Medlock. Your uncle won't bother you because he's going away. Mary scowled at the food. She felt more miserable than ever. When Mary woke up the next morning, there was another girl in her room. "'Who are you?' demanded Mary. "'I'm Martha, miss,' said the girl. "'I brought you breakfast.' "'You should you should go play outside. It's be a beautiful day. My brother Dickon is always going on out on the moor. He's good with animals. Is Dickon? He's tamed all sorts.' Mary was intrigued by Dickon. She thought it must be wonderful to be able to tame wild animals. "'Go and look at the gardens,' said Martha. "'There's many of them. There's a secret garden, too.' Master Craven locked the door a long time ago and threw away the key. The manor grounds were huge. There seemed to be an endless chain of walled gardens, all connected by little doors. But where was the secret garden? After exploring several gardens, she came to a brick wall covered in ivy. Above it, she could see the tops of tall trees. A robin was singing in the branches. Mary looked for a door in the wall, but could not find one. Was this the secret garden? There was an old man pushing a wheelbarrow. She asked him about the robin singing above the garden. The gardener's eyes twinkled. He whistled and the robin fluttered down to the ground. He's my only friend, said the gardener. I'm lonely without him. I'm lonely too, said Mary. We're both friendless, smiled the gar gardener. Ben's my name. The robin burst into song. <whistles> he wants to be your friend, said Ben. I'm, I'm determined to find the secret garden, said Mary. Ben's mood changed. I wouldn't know where it'd be, he snapped and stomped off. Ooh, why did he act that way? 
Mary was determined more than ever to find the door to the secret garden. She spent whole days looking for it. She didn't find it, but the cold winter air brought a rosy glow to her cheeks. You are starting to look happy, said Ben. One day there was a terrible storm and Mary couldn't go outside. She sat in her room talking to Martha. Why does Mr. Craven hate the locked garden? she asked. It was his wife's garden, Martha explained. She filled it with her favorite flowers, but ten years ago the branch she was sitting on broke. Poor Miss, Mrs. Craven fell and died. Master Craven locked the door and buried the key. Suddenly Mary heard a strange noise. It sounded like someone crying far away. It's only the wind howling, Martha said quickly. But it's indoors, insisted Mary. "'Na, nah, miss,' cried Martha, looking scared. "'Ye only heard the wind, honest.' But Mary was sure she was right. Why was Martha lying? <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Mystery. That night she heard that awful wailing sound again. She was sure it was someone crying. The next morning it was still raining. Once again Mary couldn't go outside. Who was crying? Mary decided to explore. She searched along gloomy corridors and up and down rickety stairs. The crying got louder when she reached a large wall papered landing. I really like her dress in this picture. Suddenly a door opened and Mrs. Medlock appeared. What are you doing here? She growled. Get back to your room right away. That afternoon, the sky cleared and Mary went out. She spotted the robin in a tree. He hopped down and pecked at the soil with his beak. Mary came closer to see what he'd found. It was a key, half buried in the earth. Was it the key to the secret garden? Please, she whispered to the robin, show me the way in. The robin hopped onto the wall. Just then, a gust of wind blew and the ivy parted like a curtain. Mary caught a glimpse of a door behind it. She pushed aside the ivy and inserted the key in the lock. It was stiff, but it turned. Her heart beating fast, Mary pushed open the door and stepped through. She had found the secret garden. Mary looked around in awe. The trees and bushes seemed to be dead and the ground frozen, but there was a magic in the air just the same. I shall come here every day, she said. It will be my own special garden. Mary was bursting to tell Martha about the secret garden, but she did not dare. What if someone stopped her from going in again? Instead, she said, I wish I had some seeds and a spade. Dickon'll get them for ye, said Martha. A few days later, Mary spotted a boy sitting under a tree. He was playing a pipe with two rabbits at his knee. A squirrel sat listening to the music in a branch overhead. I'm Dickon, he said. I've brought the spade and seeds. She, he had such a kind face that Mary was sure she could trust him. I'm using them in the secret garden, she said. You found it? Dickon gasped. I've heard tell of it, but I never saw it. I'll show it to you, said Mary. She led Dickon to the garden and he looked around. With a bit of work, he said, this place could be full of flowers in the spring. Look, she made a new friend. That afternoon, Mrs. Medlock came to fetch Mary. Mr. Craven is home from his travels. He wants to see you before he goes away again, she said, sounding astonished. Mr. Craven was much younger than Mary had expected, and his back wasn't at all crooked. Are they looking after you? he asked. Is there anything else you want? I wish I had a bit of earth to grow flowers in, said Mary timidly. You can choose any bit of land on my estate and make it your own, laughed Mr. Craven. 
I choose the secret garden, Mary said to herself. Now she truly felt that the hidden place was her own special place. Mary and Dickens spent a lot of time in the secret garden, pruning and clearing the ground for sowing. Leaves unfurled on the ground and shoots poked out of the dark soil. One night, Mary heard the mysterious wailing again. She traced her way along the corridors until she came to the wall-papered landing. The sound was coming from behind the door. She pushed it open to see a boy lying in bed. Who are you? he sniffed. I'm Mary Lennox. Who are you? I'm Colin, Mr. Craven's son. I'm going to have a crooked back like my father. I'm going to die soon. That's why my father won't let anyone see me. Your father doesn't have a crooked back, said Mary. Colin seemed very spoiled and unhappy. Perhaps he needed to see the secret garden. That would make him feel better. I've never heard of my mother's garden, sniffed Colin with Mary, when Mary told him about it. No one tells me anything. I take care of it with Dickon, Martha's brother, explained Mary. But you must promise to keep it a secret too, or the grown-ups will stop us from going there. I should like to see it, said Colin, but I'm not allowed out. I cannot walk. Just then, Mrs. Medlock came in. She scowled at Mary in astonishment. Don't you dare send her away, said Colin. She makes me feel better. After that, Mary was allowed to come see Colin every day. They talked about the garden and Dickens' pets. Then one night, Mary was woken up by Martha banging on her door. Mrs. Medlock has sent for you, she cried. Master Collins is dying. Mary found Colin punching the pillow on his bed. Stop it, said Mary. You are not dying. People tell you that because it's what you want to hear. Colin calmed down. You must take me to the secret garden, he whispered. Perhaps if there's nothing wrong with me, there I shall live. The next day, Dickon came in Colin's into Colin's room. He put a lamb on Colin's lap. Colin stroked its warm fleece. Oh, I must go to the secret garden and see creatures like these. Oh, that's sweet. They're all becoming friends and helping Colin. While Mary kept a lookout, Dickon pushed Colin outside in his wheelchair. It was nearly spring and the secret garden was full of flowers and birds. I shall live, Colin whispered, falling under the garden spell. I shall live. Have you ever been in a beautiful garden that made you feel so alive? Spring turned to summer and the secret garden grew even more beautiful. Mary turned brown as a nut working in the sunshine and Colin grew stronger. I wish I could walk around the garden, he said. You can do it, said Mary. Colin gripped Mary's and Dickens' hands and slowly tottered to his feet. He took a step, then another and another. After that, Colin practiced walking until he did not need the wheelchair any more. Our mom would like to see the secret garden, said Dickon one day. Dickens' mom marveled at the flowers and the trees, but also at Mary and Colin. That night, she wrote Mr. Craven a letter telling him to come back very quickly to see the children for himself. All of these children look healthy and happy now. Mr. Craven was in a faraway land when he got the letter. He read it quickly, and a few short days later, he arrived home at Misselthwaite Manor. He stood outside the, gar the secret garden and wondered where he'd buried the key. Then he heard laughter behind the walls. He, star he stared in astonishment as the door opened and a boy ran out. Father, it's me, Colin. Come and see the garden. 
Mary came out, and they led Mr. Craven into the garden. It was lovelier than it had ever been before, but even more beautiful were Mary and Colin. Mary had found happiness in caring for the garden, and Colin was healthy and strong. The secret garden had healed them both. The end.